uh, Tony, and uh, good evening, well, fellow products of conception and former fetuses. <laughs> uh, I want to underscore something he took my opening line away from me uh, about the movie Unplanned. I just saw it a couple of nights ago. I think it is, uh, it's more than a pro-life movie. It is truth. It is reality. It is uh, probably the most powerful film of its kind I've ever seen. And those of you who are not familiar with it, it's the story of Annie Johnson, who was the uh, former director of the Planned Parenthood uh, abortion clinic in Texas. And one day, after uh, several years in this position, first as an aide and later as director, the abortionist uh, calls her into the procedure room because he needs some assistance and someone else isn't available. And for the very first time, she sees an actual abortion performed. Now, uh, don't take your young children to see it, but if you have teenagers, uh, particularly uh, teenage daughters, you should take them along. And even more, uh, take along somebody who's either on the fence or claims to be pro-choice and is open to hearing another point of view. It really is an amazing film, very well written, very well acted, and extremely powerful. And the most important part of it is what we saw here tonight. I think uh, ultrasound is our ultimate weapon. Uh, I always say we need to pass these things in our state legislatures uh, because we want to empower women. Now, we take the phrase from the other side and turn it against them. Uh, we say we want women to have more information, not less. I remember debating this issue some years ago with Eleanor Sneel, who was then the head of the National Organization for Some Women. <laughs> And uh, to the University of Maryland, of course, the professors brought out all their students. I figured, well, it's going to be like Daniel in the lion's den. This guy's conservative. This guy's religious. This guy, therefore, must be an idiot. So I said, well, uh, Ellie, I'll make you a deal tonight. She said, what? I said, well, I'll come out in favor of Roe versus Wade. I'll never speak against it again on one condition. She said, what's that? I said, that you come out for full disclosure for women. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, we, they need to see a sonogram, a picture of that which they are about to dispatch. They need to have information about uh, health, financial, spiritual health, and, uh, and other things. Well, she refused. I said, then you're really a censor. Now, when you call a secular progressive a censor, the, the veins start to stand out in the neck. You know, they really don't like it. So I think we take a page from the other side. And she said, well, you're implying that women aren't smart enough to figure this out on their own. I said, oh, oh, OK. Well, let's take the labels off all of the bottles packaged in the cans of the supermarket, truth and labeling, because women ought to be smart enough to know what's inside the can, the caloric content, the cost, and all the rest. Oh, and uh, when women go to buy a car, let's take that ugly sticker off the window, because uh, women ought to be smart enough to know the price of the car, uh, the, the add-ons, the emissions, the miles per gallon. And when a woman goes to a bank and applies for a loan, don't give her any paperwork about the interest rate and what happens if she doesn't pay it back, because she should be smart enough to figure this out on her own. Truth and lending, right? So we've got, to get, we've got to give them truth in utero. We're going to give them truth on the contents of the unborn baby. I think this is our greatest weapon. And we can accuse the other side of censorship if they don't want women to be fully informed. So 